Shu. Trying to be sneaky, throws down that man. Oh, pushing for the heal tonight. It That's catches massive. almost anybody. That's going to be Dogman's healing for the Transcendence. Absolutely worthless under those members. Pumpo juggled way in the back, going to be taken down. They need to trade one back immediately here for Soul. And sure enough, there it is. The double from Toby. You My goodness. It. You got to give it to Toby. Welcome, space monkeys and hamsters, to Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into a different esport every day of the week. I'm AJ Fry. This is Ron Renanthra Lee, and we are back from our long weekend, refreshed and ready to talk all things Overwatch. Yeah, I had a fantastic weekend. Good. Two things. Yeah. One, Winston's not a monkey. He's a scientist. That was rude of you. Oh, I... And I, second of all... Excuse me. Pardon me. <laughs> how was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was good. Uh, big announcement. I'm currently... Holding strong in low diamond. Oh my gosh! You know all the all the little lessons that started to add up. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's definitely all thanks to Ron. So how long until Masters? Um, probably never. Probably oh come never. on, you need more confidence. <laughs> how was your weekend, my friend? Um, I, I actually great. I played some games against the Toronto Defiant guys. Ooh. Yeah, I won a couple. Nice. You, know, you want some juice? Yeah. So when I when I actually logged in, you yeah. know, got into Champ Select. Yeah. Uh, Asher was on my team. And he just insta locked uh, main tank twice in a row. Ooh. I was like, I can play main. Like, Asher, you play DPS. You're a DPS player. I could, yeah, I could yeah. play Reinhardt. And he's like, No, no, I want to play Ryan. So Ooh. does that mean, you know, someone's? Is there a lineup shakeup? Is there a little shift on the horizon here? for yeah. the defiant? We'll have Yakfung to benched. wait and see. You maybe heard it here first, folks. But first things first, we got a fellow Canadian calling in to provide his insight on week three of the Overwatch League. And before that, you know what we should start with? Crazy idea. Some highlights. Oh, there it is. EMP right over the top. That's a whole lot of hands. Oh, 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 oh. That is brutal. The stick from Erster. Four kills. No way to defend themselves. Erster just aced it. Six kills for him. Final blow wise. Toby looking for the play. No one's going to find Fitz. That's a lot of damage gone. They need to trade one back immediately here for Soul. And sure enough, there it is. The double from Toby. 53 seconds between grabs for Sinatra. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> what? Juice Trick getting Trick home and he's big. The Rascals about to deal some serious damage, but they can't get away. The healing is there. Violet just knocks him down between him and Rascal. They're unstoppable on the shock. Now have the largest amount of maps consecutively won in the Overwatch League. Dogman getting pressured by Mecco. It's gonna get popped out. Mono gonna be taken down. The self-destruct not gonna find anything. Maybe even gonna be eliminated. They do lose out on Daco, but it is again Atlanta Rain coming up with the kills. They get the flip. Yeah, I mean, already Mecco taking a beating the rally armor, trying to keep him sustained, but will lose out on that one. And Daco with the pop manages to find a Namo. Donek is going to be sitting here in the corner trying to survive. On the back comes Super Flivero, but the kills, the feed, it's all in favor of the Atlanta Raid. Rally rolling through. OT going to start ticking away. Man, they need that sound barrier. They're not going to get it. He gets killed off. The grab comes through from Baby Bay. He locks him up. 208 on the clock for Atlanta Rain side of this. And YXL still going to be fighting away. The bomb comes up over the top, looks for the picks. Mecco going to be taken out. And Atlanta Rain is going to break the streak. I said it, Immortality field out, but down quickly. Gladiator's on the point, but they're losing oh people my. too quickly. Decay, the only person getting a kill on the LA side for what? now. <laughs> Jin was crazy. <laughs> what? Now, gets a right click on the Shaz right off the bat. Decay has to flee. Hydration down again. That's a double kill for Jim already. Is there anything this guy can't play? He's coming back in at Sombra is returning now and Decay down. He's down. Jinmu with three in a row right now, making four. You have a, a delay while the Portcullis opens right here. Decay is going to be sitting there on the high ground trying to get another EMP. We've seen this one before. Yep. They're going to drop like stones. Yep, that's right. Mercy oh, going all the way down. That's a, what a pick for Decay. That's just some nice tracking. The Gladiators, as soon as they finish Keo, are going to win. As soon as they finish Amon, <laughs> are going to win this series. There we go. The LA Gladiators take it 3-1. And with that, they will clinch their stage two playoff berth. 6-0. Oh. That's right. Because he's just so slippery. But here's that Graviton Surge now from Hunter. They have to use his ultimates and they have to be effective. But Kutrai goes down. Bebe also missing. That is not what the spark we're looking for here. They were supposed to be breaking the mold and breaking the deadlock, but instead, they get half of the team taken out when they try and initiate with a Graviton Surge. Hanjo, just like that, the Guangzhou Chards have ended their map loss streak. 
All right, Shu, trying to be sneaky, throws down that mana, pushing for the heal tonight. It That's connects massive. almost anybody! That's gonna be Dogman's healing for the Transcendence. Absolutely worthless under those members. Pumpo juggled way into the back, gonna be taken down. Can they even get to the cart in time? That's just gonna be it. They hold him. No more points. Guangzhou says, you know what? We'll finish the map. That's it. No further ones added onto the record. They close out this series with a 3-1. Yep, Guangzhou charged up for a win. New York took a big tumble and a new record has been set. My goodness, did week three of the Overwatch League give us a lot to go over. And joining us today on the line, we got pro player most recently of the Montreal Rebellion, a man so nice. He named himself twice. It's Shane Shane LaRock. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, guys. How you doing? We're doing very well. You're doing good. good. Yeah, yeah, doing well, yeah. Not bad. Uh, and uh, doing great. San Francisco Shock setting a record. Most consecutive map wins in a stage with 20 so far. They've now gone 5-4-0 wins in a row, beating Toronto. Let's not talk about that. And the Spark <laughs> as well. Uh, so, Shane, what are your thoughts on San Francisco Shock? Are they setting themselves up as the team to take down the Titans once and for all? Well... Honestly, if any team is going to take down Titans, it's probably going to be the Shock because they're just ridiculously confident on Goats as we saw in the Stage 1 Finals. And then also, I think they're a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like diverse in their compositional picks. They're a little bit more uh, stronger on DPS than, than Titans are. So, should be good. Should yeah. be good. I mean, I, yeah. I want to ask you a question, um, given that we saw, again, them face off before. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the tension, uh, you know, from the casters and stuff was on Super and Bumper. Between those two main tanks, who everyone says are really, really good, mm. do you think one of them is better than the other, given what you've seen for the stage? Has Super been better than Bumper now, or he's, has he usurped him or anything? Well, actually, I've always thought that, like, those two were really, like, head-to-head -head, uh, as far as, like, skill and, like, their knowledge of the game. It's just really, like, about, like, Goats is obviously a super huge, like, team team oriented gameplay hmm. like or like composition in general so the big thing about the big difference in between titans and shock right now is that like titans they put they put everything into enabling bumper everything right there's there's not i don't think there's a big like disparity or um difference in skill and knowledge of the game between those two tanks hmm. but as far as like the team play styles it's extremely different and so that, that's where like titans usually edge out is that they they do really good job of keeping uh keeping Bumper up and making sure they're enabling him into like getting the big shatters or just bailing him out of like his crazy plays, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why that's what makes him look so flashy is that he does crazy stuff, but everybody gets in there. Everybody still like, bails him out and gets in there with him. And uh, that's how they enable that get that like, you know, that like crazy aggressive play style. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Shock, they try to do a more balanced, uh, that balanced play style between like enabling Sinatra a little bit so he can pop off because everybody knows Sinatra is a crazy Zarya. Mm -hmm. And then they have also, um, they also have Choi, uh, Choi Hyobin, just you know, always off, uh, at an off angle, pressuring from the sides as Diva. So it's mm. a little bit, it's a little bit different play style, but you know, they, they find their, they, they find that it works for like either team, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I know in, in under a different meta where DPS was uh, more favorable in this current meta, obviously the tank is the kind of the focal point of your team. So is it? Is it the skill of an individual tank that really is, you know, leading most teams in this current meta, or is it that ability, like you're saying, the shock have in order to play more um, effectively as a team that that's, you know, rising to the top outside of shock versus, uh, you know, Titans and mm -hmm. Bumper and Super? I think in I think in Goat's meta, a lot of what the a lot of what a team's ability like lies on the the, the, it's, uh, the shoulders of like the main tank definitely carry that. I think like it's most obviously seen with uh, Fusions joining Boston. Mm -hmm. He is like if you've ever seen him play in person, you'll see that he never closes his mouth. That guy is always talking and he's always yelling. Like it is, <laughs> it is crazy. It's. Re I remember when I saw him at World Cup. It was like, whoa, this guy's, this guy. <laughs> how are his vocal cords not shot right now? Because it's it's re like he is micromanaging everybody. Right. And I think that's what a lot of like the top tier main tanks will do is that like. In GOATS, Zarya Bubbles, Lucio Speed Boost, Diva Defense Matrix, all those abilities now belong to the Reinhardt. And he's the one making, the, he's the one calling the shots and deciding the tempo of the game. And he's the one who's like, you know, he knows when it's good for him to go in. And since he's mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the, the spearhead, then that's, that's how you kind of, that's kind of what you decide your play off of. Well, right. it should be interesting uh, watching uh, Shock over the next couple of weeks. They got a mm -hmm. buy next week, but then they're uh, facing off against Philly and Shanghai. So. Mm -hmm. 
probably going to continue to see them dominating. Yeah, would not yeah, be surprised to see two more 4-0s and have a completely perfect stage. Yeah, uh, easily. That'd be impressive. <laughs> well, uh, one team that is uh, surprising us, we've got to talk about Atlanta with their inconsistent play, defeating the New York XL. <laughs> yeah, big upset, biggest upset of pretty much ever. I actually, <laughs> watching that game, took note and said they were up 2-0 at halftime just so I'd remember to say that because I figured, you know, it would be a reverse sweep. <laughs> right. But, wow, managed to uh, to hold them down. Why? And then uh, losing to, uh, to the charge. Right, yeah, Guangzhou really got their number in the match after. But before yeah. this, um, you know, it's really surprising because Atlanta lost to the winless Valiant the week prior. Yeah. So just a really bizarre two weeks um, from them overall. Uh, and, you know, Deco coming in uh, during their win against NYXL, everyone expected them to win against Charge, no question. Yeah. Um, so it seems like Deco, although was the solution uh, for one game, was simultaneously the problem <laughs> in another and was likely the reason, at least rumors say, that he was benched for a couple of weeks now. Um, so Shane, yeah, what do, you, what do you think about Atlanta? What do you think about uh, the moves with Deco? Do you think that's justified? Give me your thoughts. Well, as far as as far as the stuff going on with Deco, I I, know, I can't say for certain. It's all just rumor mill, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going off of as, like really, I don't have a lot of like inside info on that going on or like anything going on in that team. But it really looks like that team is just struggling to find a, an identity, like with. Uh, all their roster swaps and everything going on and probably i imagine there's there's definitely stuff going on with because uh deco's a very strong off tank and he's, he's been playing with them for so long and then to suddenly pick up fried and start playing with him mm -hmm. it's you know there's got to be something going on um but it definitely seems like they're struggling to find like uh, an identity a, a strong play style and they're kind of like that's why they're so hit and miss right because they'll, they'll have a day where you know baby bay goes crazy on zarya but then there's other there's other days where everybody's memeing Baby Bay for getting all his grass eaten, right? So, do you think it was kind of like a void left by Defran? Do you think he had on top of his mechanical skill like some sort of morale-inducing quality or anything like that that they really need now? Ooh, I you know I haven't thought about that a little like too much, but now that you bring it up, that does make a lot of sense. Like, I can totally see that um, Defran bringing in a little an air of positivity to the entire team mm -hmm. because he's so. Unique. Um, I wanna say I, I, I'm gonna say aloof. Unique. I'm gonna say aloof. Like yeah, aloof he, he is a good word to describe him. He tries hard, but like he also keeps it keeps it pretty relaxed and mellow because I mean, that's just that that's his personality, right? Yeah. But, I mean, getting him in ranked is like such a thrill because he's like he's so much fun. He's like you can tell he generally enjoys playing the game. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's like, like I'm sure that is a good quality to have when you're in a high stake situation. Yeah. Mm. Be before we move on to another team, though, I gotta ask you both a very important question. Oh, okay. Is the bowl cut going to affect their gameplay moving forward? <laughs> <laughs> he looks more Korean now. So is yeah. that good? Is that bad? I think, I think that's a plus right there. For for Dogman, with all the memes with the power of Reddit behind him right now, like I think uh, I think we're just gonna see him pop off and pull like insane stats and surpass uh, Jonak. <laughs> but it's only because it's Dogman. So if you if you if you got a uh, like a bowl cut, would it affect your gameplay at all? Would it increase your your chances of making it to Overwatch League? You think? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only dog bad. Well, uh, let's talk the charge. Uh, obviously, uh, winning against Atlanta, but then losing two to three to the Spark. Mm -hmm. uh, they've given up on the Goats meta, played largely Doomfist. So, mm -hmm. are these is this a team to watch for wins, or just a team to watch for the fun of it? Um, you know, I think uh, it's a little bit of both, right? I always like a team that is not afraid to stray from the meta-heavy compositions, right? Yeah. Uh, and Doomfist is a character that. Uh, you know, some love to love, some, you know, really dislike him. He can be kind of oppressive to play against. I don't like playing against him at all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, we both play support. I mean, Shane plays main tag, and he yeah. can actually survive the punch, so he might have a biased opinion. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's nice to see that after Charge were struggling so, so much mm. to nail any wins whatsoever, that they had two very competitive games uh, this week, um, and Eileen, who, you know, Shane might know a thing or two from, um, you know, Screaming and stuff uh, with the World Cup teams and Team China. Mm. China was really, really good, partially because Eileen was so versatile and his Doomfist was so threatening. Um, so, give me your thoughts on what do you what do you think about Doomfist given the the Goats meta, and do you like the adaption? Well, I think Doomfist is like he's always been a really interesting pick in that he punishes really hard on teams that are still a little bit too slow in their tempo. So, like it, with Doomfist, is right. Anytime it, Doomfist pulls the trigger first, 
he's pretty much guaranteed some sort of value and disruption and that disruption it can go a long long way into goats kind of mirror or like you know slightly goats variation comps mm -hmm. because anytime anytime somebody's pulling the trigger first that means they've got the upper hand most of the time unless it's you know a zarya counter grab or something mm -hmm. um so yeah, Doomfist, you're pretty much guaranteed value, and especially into like more uh, disorganized teams, teams that probably have are having issues like Atlanta um, with their coordination. Then you're definitely just gonna you're definitely gonna see results with Doomfist. Mm, yeah. Well, Shane, uh, looking at the uh, the tank lineup for the charge, uh, Rio and Hotba, mm. do you watch the the tank specifically when you're watching these matches? Are you trying to pick up little things from the from the pro players, or are you just watching the match as a whole and enjoying it as a spectator, like we all are? Uh, well, there's definitely times when like I will I will be particularly using the uh, Overwatch League All Access Pass to like watch particular players that I'm really interested in. Yeah, but it's not usually or. It usually is main tanks, but sometimes I'll switch off to um, the uh, Zarya players and Diva players to see how they're using their abilities and how they're and because they usually have a you know a greater field of view of the entire team fight. Mm. So like especially Zenyatta players, they see everything, right? A Reinhardt player is like a horse with blinders on; you only see so much. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a Zenyatta or a Zarya, they have a much better field of view of the entire team fight, so you can kind of get a, a better. Uh, understanding learn. of like yeah you get better understanding of what's going on and learn a bit more about what it looks like for uh, yep. other players uh well let's move on to the gladiators undefeated locking in the first playoff spot for our stage yeah. two playoffs six uh, and zero right uh yeah i think that's uh that's the case six and oh so yeah. far the only, only one game left and we're only halfway through stage two yeah yeah so they got quite a little bit of a break before they, you know, to, to prepare and stuff. It's re really nice. Yeah, the only tough match that they've had so far has been uh, Seoul so far. Um, do we think uh, Gladiators may be there to give uh, Titans a run for their money as well, uh, on par with Shock moving forward? Hmm. Actually, they're. Yeah, they, I could totally see them taking it. Like, really? With this with this new meta and decay, it seems like a, the uh, the new pickups for gladiators are really coming into their own like lately. Mm -hmm. With uh, decay, like decay just recently popping off, yeah. And also also roar seem seem to become a little bit more consistent. I think uh, I think they're they're in a good spot right now. Especially they're probably on a extremely good high right now, just off of like their wins, their record right now is just insane. So. Yeah, I mean, having that little break would be useful coming into playoffs, obviously, right? Mm. And um, I mean, if you're gonna pay like $500,000 for Decay, he better be doing his job, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I, I've never really thought of Gladiators as a team that could win it all. I always think they've been consistently good. And they I'd... were fourth last season, weren't they? Did yeah, they I mean, win? but you would you say like a, a team that was in fourth is, you know, like ever gonna realistically be like a team you can say will be first? Sure, when there's 20 in the know. league, no? Come I don't on. know. I think I think well, there's like a, a pretty strict cutoff between the first three and everyone beneath. Um, uh, at least at least in this season. But let's not forget that at the end of the first stage, Toronto Defiant were <laughs> listed as three. Yes, uh, I know, but that, I, 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 had the, I had the rose tinted glasses on. I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure Shane okay. did too and everyone else. Well, let's move on to another team uh, currently doing well as well. Ugh, that wasn't the best phrasing there. Uh, London Spitfire, should we say Splitfire? Yeah, did you see the Fnatic <laughs> tank top? Very evidently, the, that's that's bad. Splitfire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, they're uh, just 4 0 Boston. Uh, they're, they're doing well. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, London Spitfire or Splitfire there, Shane? <laughs> My new favorite team, Splitfire. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're a really interesting team because They've they've always been like they they have this this ability inside them where they can just go insane right like we saw that evidently in stage four of last season right where they just went crazy and they just started dominating everybody mm. uh, but meanwhile they had that that valley where they're in stage two and three where they were just a little bit you know middle of the pack so yeah they're uh, they're they're a wild card team to me almost at this point like they're insane mechanically but yeah. they're unpredictable well they're uh, we can predict what their next matches are going to turn out like because they're going up against Paris, Chengdu, and Houston, so... Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice schedule to have, yeah. for sure. I mean, they're currently 4-0 no, with, with, you said, Florida, Chengdu, and Houston as their next three games? Uh, Paris, Chengdu, and Houston. Yeah, I think realistically they could actually 7-0. I don't think um, that's unlikely. I think we might see them go a perfect stage, even though they don't seem like a team that should yeah. be able to say they have a perfect stage. Well, I mean, if we end up with the Gladiators 
with a undefeated. Stage. Yeah. And we end up with, with London. Spitfire with a perfect stage and San Francisco Shock with a perfect stage. And, and Vancouver then Titans. Vancouver undefeated. We're gonna get as well. four teams with undefeated records going into the stage playoffs, which would yeah. be insane. That would be that would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Bonkers going in. But just I watching think watching who will finally lose. I don't think those are the four best teams though. I think we can say Vancouver and Shock are pretty definitively on top. Yeah. But both Gladiators and London have pretty easy schedules. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't really like the system we have well, with then, the whole stages and that's who goes to playoffs and stuff for that reason. Shane, who are your picks then? I mean, we're sitting here a few more weeks out, although this weekend is going to be a short weekend. We'll talk more about that later in the in the show. Who are your picks then for like the tops of, of this stage? The tops of this stage? Yeah. Well, Let's yeah. say top four. It, top yeah. four? Um, wow. That's tough. Because NYXL is like usually on everyone's list, but just seeing them lose to Atlanta, you're like, what's oh, going on? Yeah, yeah, really what is going on. That, that's a big question mark right there. Um, man, I, I want to say Dynasty can make a comeback with the way they've been playing. Mm -hmm. I want to see breaking them up. records. I, yeah, I would love to see them come back and make a, make, make a big swing up. But it's definitely just probably going to be Gladiator, Shock, Titans, and then you can leave that last one to Dynasty or X, like NYXL, because the rest of them are they're, they're That's the big fight then. There we go. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a big fight. Who's going to get that fourth place? Oh, uh, man, we got so many more questions for you, but I know we're starting to run a little bit low on time. Uh, a big question that Ron and I have been talking about, and I'm going to throw it out to you, uh, mm. because uh, you know, you've know you got your experience in the Contenders League. Uh, with Florida Mayhem doing as bad as they are, like bottom <laughs> of the barrel, last place in the league. But Even with all Koreans. Yeah, even yeah. even with their their new lineup, uh, mm. but with their contenders team just dominating, do you think we will possibly see by season end a complete lineup flip? How would the contenders team fare in the pro uh, circuit on the the main stage? What do you think? Well, I think with the current Florida Mayhem like academy roster, if they were just to be thrown into Owl, they would probably be, I, I would say they'd be able to perform at the same level of, let's say, the Outlaws right now. Mm -hmm. okay. like, wow. a, a lot of their a lot of their players are Owl caliber. Yeah. I think I think given like the opportunity to practice in that environment and scrim against those teams would be massive for that team and they would probably see like exponential growth in a short period of time, especially considering like how they've been performing in contenders. They, they've been doing really, really well. Wow. And, you know, Usurping Fusion University is like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, no, it's no small feat. Record. That was really impressive. I mean, like, I, th I think that raises another question for me, real briefly. Um, you know, given your experience, uh, how do you rank the like contenders teams right now in comparison to Owl players? Do you think there's like a big gulf, or do you think a lot of them are Owl caliber, but you know, just don't get like the the same amount of experience or game time or recognition? Good question. Well, I think with contenders players is they they definitely have like oh, there's a lot of contenders players who are clearly not anywhere close to owl caliber right. right now. But there's also there's like a handful in there that are the ones that usually get picked up, you know, by uh, by owl teams that are absolutely like easily passing some of the current owl players right now. And but like as far as pure like just teams themselves that can compete with owl teams, I don't think there's many. Like Fusion University, I know perform very well against Owl teams. I would imagine wow. um, Mayhem Academy do do well as well mm -hmm. lately. But I would say most like most blocks, most blocks that most contenders teams get against Owl teams, it's it's not pretty. Oh, okay. Well, that's well, that's quite a bit of insight. There's a little bit of juice there. Give yeah. us a little bit of a hint. <laughs> well, let's go even further with that. Are there any contenders players that you would like to see, uh, you know, bumped up to the uh, Overwatch League right now? Like, who would your top maybe three picks for for a promotion be? Besides yourself. <laughs> well, I think I think coming up, I would like to see Hawk when he's of age. But wow. for right now, I want to see Manga Chu and Owl very yeah, badly. Yeah, he's been there for a while. Just yeah, smurfing at contenders. <laughs> <laughs> really, he's been smurfing at contenders. When I played with him for a short little stint on my old team, he was like a joy to play with. Like both as like a personality and also mechanically and like insight wise, mm. the guy has a massive brain. So I want to see him and Al. Well, uh, we want to see something for you right now. We know you're a big uh, Hammond player. Can you recreate Hammond's uh... <laughs> <laughs> the new highlight intro? Give us, give us the uh, dramatic yeah, need, the, the turnaround. Yeah, we need the gift for the show. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah, give, give it to oh, us. Boy. Are you ready? Just All count right. us down, Shane. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one. Bam, bam, bam. 
Oh, man. I can't believe you asked him to do that. that. He's never going to come on the show ever again, AJ. We're no. just going to make all of our guests do that. Shane, okay. thank you so much for joining us. we got to give it, uh, bid you goodbye. But thanks again uh, for uh, joining us. Your fantastic insight. It's been great having you on the show. <laughs> thanks, guys. Appreciate it. It was fun. <laughs> Well, that was certainly insightful. Let's get to some major news now, just you and I. Okay. I want to pull it back to me getting into Diamond. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have to talk about uh, this, uh, this week's schedule. No games this Thursday and Friday, a more relaxed schedule for Overwatch League. Instead, we're going to get our big games this weekend as uh, Dallas Fuel are hosting in a sold-out 4,500-seat uh, wow. arena in Allen, Texas. That's going to be packed. Which is pretty cool. It's nice to see uh, the show going on the road. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a nice little glimpse of what 2020 might be like when mm. all the you know teams will be flying out, uh, playing in the home arenas and stuff like that. So and that's we pretty cool. Don't have any insight as to where the Toronto Defiant will be playing in town yet. No, they we did have some have suspicions, their, though. Yeah, we have yeah. some some theories. They did announce, of course, the weekend partnering with the team as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty cool. And Atlanta will be hosting a showdown series in July the 6th and 7th at the Cobb Energy Center. Never so been there. <laughs> more? No, you haven't. No. Have you? Nope. Sold out a show, a comedy show there. Uh, yeah. You know, Talk about your adventures in ranks. No, no big your misadventures. <laughs> no big deal. Um, now, can we talk about the DLC that dropped last week? You and I played some on the yeah. first day uh, after Storm the show. Storm Rising. Storm Rising, yeah. and it was not really rising the morale of the Overwatch community for the no. fact that it ended up being pretty much exactly the same as the last DLC yeah. this time last year. And like the narrative was okay, but then the payoff at the end was like a reveal of a character that they've never teased before and we had no idea who it was. Yeah. It was like a hooded Omnic and we were like, so are we supposed to get hyped for a guy we've never had any lead up to? Who sounds just like a uh, Reaper. Yeah, it's, it's like a just... robotic Reaper with a yeah. slight dif slightly different accent or something. So the question is then, like, how many different next heroes are there right now? So, so when Ash came out, yeah. Uh, and Jeff Kaplan did his whole like developer update. He yeah. said they had like six or seven characters in the pipeline. Right. And we got one in um, Ash herself, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, we could get we can get you know that that blue Cortana looking girl at any time. We this could Maximilian get Maximilian guy. Yeah, Maximilian. We can get Sojourn, who's that yeah. lady leading them in the operation. Right. Whoever the mysterious Omnic is at the end. Um, yeah, lots of lots of possibilities. Mama Hong. Mm. You know. I just really want my mechanical hero who can like throw out platforms for everyone to reach new heights. Just, there's so just many send times Jeff an like, email. I need to get up to that platform there for proper positioning. Just there's play no Winston. May on the team. Yeah, yeah, but like if I'm, you know, Zen, I want to sit on Volsky on the little hut thing there. Right. Like, there's yeah, no way to jump up there. You know, we can't just we can't what if just. If you get a May on your team, you get the boost. I just want a then character to like give us the. But I don't want to be May. <laughs> Stop giving me the answers. You have the I tools. Don't want. You have the tools. <laughs> Uh, one thing we should talk about, uh, just overall, uh, viewership on Twitch has been down. People haven't been watching as much Twitch. But this week, uh, Overwatch League was actually the number one channel on yeah, Twitch. Which is nice. You know, yeah. like Overwatch League is usually kind of middling in terms of viewership. But mm. I guess on a weekend where nothing else is airing, it could hit number one, which is, uh, you know, that's good for them. But also, consider this is it that they've actually garnered some viewership? with the traditional broadcasts on Disney Channel and ABC, and people are now starting to trickle over to Twitch to watch that thing that they watched last weekend, but they can't find there, so now people are finding Overwatch League on their own. I think that's a slim possibility, but at the same time, <laughs> that was I That's a very doubt... polite way to say my idea was stupid and you well, don't like it. No, I'm just saying most... <laughs> that's a very slim possibility. <laughs> most 30-year-old dudes who want to watch football probably aren't you know, rushing to Twitch to watch other guys play not football. You're right, but there are so many people out there who are now leaving traditional broadcasts to go to locations like Twitch. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to, to watch things. I know my dad often will stream like ball games and stuff. And oh. he's like, yeah, I just go to Reddit and I find a link and someone's got it there because he doesn't have all the American channels and he wants to watch various baseball games yeah. there. So I think we are starting to foster a bit more of a community. I mean, it's already it's a huge a community more respectable. here on Twitch. 15 million daily active users. It's a big number. It's a lot of you out there. Yeah. I mean, here's, here's the thing. I, I really hope that Twitch, uh, you know, gets bigger and, and, you know, people start respecting it more as a platform and video games and esports yeah. and stuff in general. Yeah. But a small part of me wants to keep it, like, I don't want the dudes from, like, ESPN rushing in and, like, saying mean things in Twitch chat and stuff. We have a very different community here. We do. I mean, I know it isn't our scene uh, fighting games, but I don't know if you saw the uh, the clip of, what's his name, Hungry Box getting oh, yeah, hit the with crab the crab. Hitting yeah. Him. yeah. It's a different world even within esports, like in general. It's a big umbrella, and yeah. the communities can be quite different. Blizzard's mm. very 
uh, you know, liberal, friendly, but, yeah, optimistic. You're not allowed for to do this. Yeah. Catch it on camera. <laughs> Uh, you're not allowed to do one of these. You're not allowed to do the Pepe. Um, FGC, you're allowed to swear at the other guy. You're allowed yeah. to like stand up and really rally, like get in the other guy's face. Um, well, let's bring it back to Overwatch really quickly before I wrap up the show. <laughs> Quick thoughts on Havana as a new payload map. Uh, good song. Um, yeah. I, you know, Una Havana, na. Una Na. It's, it's, it's a nice it's tune. I'll be singing that as I, as I cruise all the way through uh, on the payload, yeah. um, winning all my games unlike you. Uh, good map. <laughs> good map. I have to get, I have to get the dig in. It's just so much fun. I can't. I'm sorry. Mm. Um, good map. I'm excited to see where it goes. <laughs> uh, I like the environment, uh, tropical atmospheres. It's nice. I live in Canada. It's cold here. Yeah. You speak. Uh, I, no, I, I feel much the same. I, I like the color of Havana. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once it gets off PTR, I'm excited to hop in. But we're excited to hop out of the show right now because uh, we have run out of time. I got a rank to maintain, and uh, Ron has uh, to go home and write more. Insults for me for the next week's episode. <laughs> uh, thanks, Shane, for calling in, and thank you at home for watching and for all your emotes and Twitch chat. If you like this and want a bit more, esports and 30. Brody and Drewface will be talking all about fighting games on the show tomorrow. It's uh, been a heck of a crazy week. Thanks for watching. See you in the future.